that's exactly where it's at. And I think that's part of how the partnership works. Uh, and I'll say, Michael, for me, it was about, you know, transitioning the skills that I had had from a previous business and just moving them over right to this business. Uh, it's sales, you know, raising money, um, operations, same thing as managing my team. I had had history of owning single family homes. Mm -hmm. I'd had a portfolio of up to, we had seven homes at one point um, across two states that, so I had a taste of, of passive income and, and the uh, financial rewards of real estate investing. But the idea of moving from, uh, I, I was prepared to go to a duplex and a triplex, right? But the, the famous story amongst Greg and I and, and our firm is that we were on a, a neighborhood walk with some some buddies around the hood. And uh, at the end of this walk, he, he, I told Greg about my plan of selling a couple of single families and then buying a triplex locally. Uh, by the way, we live in Newport Beach where a triplex sells at 300 to 700K per door. So, you know, my, my idea was how could I ever go to anything larger than that? Greg's exact phrase was, you know what I would do? I'd look up a hundred unit building and figure it out. And that phrase, that concept of like lock up a hundred unit building, like what are you talking about? Um, but the reality was, Michael, that was a matter of hours, maybe days before that belief was completely shattered, partially from your book and from some other folks that that have done this. Um, and I just all of a sudden, yeah, that belief was changed overnight um, to, of course, I can do that. Um, we just got to put the energy to it and make it happen. It's amazing how you can expand your comfort zone. And I've had a similar experience just simply walking a large building literally will, uh, it's the same as years and years of flipping houses or doing something. Because uh, flipping houses is a very slow process. And even at, the, and you have now, I flipped houses, you held some houses. It really doesn't get you there. I mean, even three, four, five years of single family house investing still doesn't get your mind. But then touring a hundred unit building, very quickly, you're like 25 unit looks small all of a sudden, just because it looked at a hundred unit building. And there's, yeah. there's, there's hacks like that that some you just you don't come up with that kind of stuff yourself. You either read it or you hear it or you have a, a coach or mentor just suggest these things. And it's surprising how you can, I would say, play with your mind and very, uh, you know, and, and hack your mind almost in, in that way. Uh, Greg, how did you come uh, overcome that, that lack of experience? I mean, this comes into play when you're, for example, calling brokers. You know, a lot of people were like, well, I, I can't analyze deals because I don't have any I don't deals to look at. Because they'd have to talk to a broker to get a deal. And there's this, there's this, this fear of talking to brokers or even investors. And how did you overcome that, that fear? Yeah, for me, I think it was a partnership with Dan that really helped me um, with some of that confidence is being able to have somebody quickly to do a little prep call with. Hey, I'm going to call this broker today. Here's the deal. Can we run through it real quick? Just to be able to have somebody throughout the day to like bounce ideas off of and do it, you know, call it a quick dry run of how the call should go, what the conversation is going to be like. That was helpful for me. So just not to be in my own head, have somebody to give you some advice and affirming, affirming thoughts. Um, that was a big thing. So the partnership with Dan has really been helpful. And then mentorship. I mean, Dan um, is very action oriented. So when I sort of gave him this idea to do larger investing and pointed him in the right direction, he was off to the races, Michael, and he was signed up for the mentor. So we benefited tremendously also from the mentorship program to be able to also have those calls with the, our mentor to be able to say, here's where we're at. What else do we need to consider? You know, make, you know, make sure we were just covering all our bases. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's awesome. So it sounds like, Dan, you're kind of an, an action taker, even though you credit Greg with the idea. That's correct. That's exactly where it's at. And I think that's part of how the partnership works. Uh, and I'll say, Michael, for me, it was about, you know, transitioning the skills that I had had from a previous business and just moving them over right to this business. Uh, it's sales, you know, raising money, um, operations, same thing as managing my team. Uh, I used to manage a P&L and had a credit line for the business. I now have a P&L and a, a debt you know, service for my building. So it was just a matter of transitioning those over. But importantly, having a mentor and having other folks in the business that could just help uh help you get over that chasm, right? That little difference, that little nuance that you need to understand. Greg and I did a great job of recruiting uh, people to give us that advice and, and and help us get over those hurdles. How did you guys find each other? <laughs> Long story there. Uh, actually, 10 plus years ago, I did an engagement for Greg's firm. Um, we partnered together on, on a deal. And then uh, I guess the, the best part of the story is we had run each other a few other times, but we purchased homes about six doors down from each other, completely un unaware that we were doing so. 
Um, so we now live, you know, a couple hundred feet away and uh, families are integrated and it's a good thing. That's pretty cool. So who, who came to whom first about getting into apartment buildings? Was that, was that the idea man, Greg, or was that maybe you? That was Greg on the apartments. That was Greg, I think, came to me a, a couple of years ago about my single family portfolio, interested into how that worked. And again, he was already on the idea of apartments first, right? He was going to skip the single family thing. And uh, so he was looking at my experience as single family and I was looking at him like, what's this apartment thing? So, Greg, how were you able to skip the single family house? I mean, Daniel and many other people aren't are able to do that. Like, no, I need to do this first. It's a stepping stone. Yep. And you're like, no, I don't think so. What what allowed you, what gave you the confidence to, uh, from, a, from a mental perspective to skip that step? Just all the content I had been consuming, Michael. I had listened to so many people's stories, you know, Bigger Pockets and then your your podcast on, on learning that lesson through other people. So I learned from other people that, you know, they had realized even after they had done a lot of single family investing, it wasn't scalable. You know, I, I but I was headed down that path. I was making some offers on some single family homes back in Iowa thinking that's what my path was going to be. And then as I was learning, I kind of pulled back on that and said, well, no, that's not really the path. Um, so I, I then shifted to uh, investing as an LP in multifamily deals when I learned about syndication. So skipped single family, went to uh, LP investing. And that's how I was able to also learn before I was becoming active in it. So you guys got together before that first deal. Is that right? Yep. So yep. so how did you go about then looking for that first deal, raising money? Talk, to, talk about uh, your first deal. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah. So first one was, so I had had a, you know, an exit from my business and was effectively free for a number of months and was, you know, building up the courage to make this my full-time uh, endeavor. Uh, Greg and I were obviously communicating constantly during that, that, that time. And a deal came up locally uh, with another sponsor that had locked up a great deal, built a great business plan. And he had had years of institutional um, experience as, you know, as an employee of a larger fund. Uh, however, a couple of weeks away from closing, he was short on, on capital. Um, so the invitation came to Greg and I uh, that if, hey, if you guys could fill up the 800 grand that we're missing, then we'd invite you to the GP team and you can have an active role in managing the property long term. Uh, it was local building. So this just checked so many boxes. So Greg and I said, all right, let's go for it. Uh, and then that's when Action Oriented Dan went in. I called 30 of my, my best friends, uh, told them what I was going to be investing in and saw if they had any interest in it. Five days later, a number of referrals later, we had had all that uh, capital uh, verbally committed to and uh, progressed until that becoming our first deal. So so a lot of times people are very uh, anxious to raise capital because obviously they've never done, done it before. And, uh, and then they are very uh, hesitant to ask friends and family because they're afraid to lose someone else's money. Uh, how, how did you prepare for that? I mean, it, it sounded like you just started pick up the phone and calling. Did you have any kind of training or did you have, did you practice on your friends first? How, how did you leg into that? Yeah, honestly, uh, the, the phrase that I, I said, and I said it with total honesty and still say it today, uh, I'm going to be investing this deal. And this is why maybe you should consider it too. As simple as that, right? So that first deal, sure, there was trepidation and, and not a full understanding of the deal like I understand them now, but the reality is I was putting my own hard earned money into that deal. I believed in the deal and I was sharing with a number of folks what I was doing. And the reality, Michael, it wasn't, hey, that's cool. The response was, whoa, what? Where's that? Can I see the OM as well? Wait a second. You're going to put how much in? Yeah, let's have a meeting around that. So that was what happened. It, I, I'm coming. I come from a sales background. I'm used to having I'm used to reaching out. I'm reaching to pick up the phone. And if someone's not interested, I, I, I'm you know, I can take that. But the reality is everyone was interested and everybody wanted to tell their friends about it. So it caught a lot of momentum. And that's how we got over that hurdle of capital raising. Um, so much momentum. So when you when you raise capital, how did you go about it? I mean, obviously you had a very unique angle. So, hey, I'm in you were I think you mentioned the word sharing. You were sharing that you're uh, investing in an apartment building deal. Yep. And I mean, did you how, to what degree did you try to close down your friend or family member? How did that conversation go? Give us an example of that. Sure. Um, first of all, we never close. You know, it's it's not a sales game. So instead, what what really what occurred was something I called the hundred coffee campaign. And this was prior to my decision to go full scale into real estate. It was really just a way for me to, hey, I'm in a I'm in a pause in my career. I'm gonna reinvent myself. Might as well go have coffee with a hundred interesting people. Tell them what I'm up to and see what's going on. I, I had a belief that opportunities would be created through those meetings, regardless. So I went in with just authentic interest in them. And I wanted to tell them what I was doing. And it 
uh, you know, out of those first 30 coffees, apartment investing came up every single time. This is something I'm doing. This is something I'm looking, moving toward. And every single person wanted to hear more. Every single one person wanted to introduce me to someone that they knew. Um, and therefore there was never a sales conversation or closing. I'm doing this. I'm excited about it. Hey, Dan, we like you and we trust you. Let's do it too. So apartments came up every single time. Was that coincidence or did you, did you perhaps steer the conversation? Uh, I don't say I'd steer it. I was simply just talking about what I was most excited about, right? Hey, you sold your company. Cool. What are you going to do now? Honestly, I think I'm going to go buy apartment buildings. What? That was effectively how it went, Michael. Yeah. <laughs>